Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. It's been one year since the deadly Hamas attack on Israel that ignited the ongoing war in Gaza. Fox 61's Kaylee Collins joins us now in studio with how the local Jewish community marked the solemn date this evening. Haiti. Well, Brent, Sarah, hundreds filled the Bethel Temple in West Hartford. It was a packed house tonight to remember those killed on that tragic day and to continue to fight to bring remaining hostages home as this war in Gaza intensifies. There were renewed calls from our state leaders for peace. They're growing louder while they also reiterate their support for Israel. A somber memorial taking place in West Hartford. We refuse to allow our people and ourselves to be enveloped in the darkness of despair. 365 days since the brutal Hamas attack in Israel that left approximately 1,200 people dead and hundreds in captivity. Then we said never again, and all of a sudden we saw it happen again one year ago. The most horrific, sadistic, brutal attack. We thought. That couldn't happen, there it was. Governor Ned Lamont was among speakers at the Jewish Federation of Greater Hartford's Remembrance event. He reiterated America's support of Israel while calling for peace as war rages on in the Middle East. Standing with our friend, we're standing with our family, we're standing with an ally, we're standing with Israel, and we will always stand with Israel. The memorial event centered on three themes, remembrance, resilience, and rebuilding. 1,200 killed, thousands injured, hostages still in the tunnels of, tunnels of Gaza. And so we, we remember them tonight, but it's also about uh, unity and resilience. Um, in the days after October 7th, our community here in Greater Hartford raised over $7 million to support those most in need. Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal had also been scheduled to attend the ceremony, but instead traveled to Israel to mark the day there. In a statement, Blumenthal wrote in part, quote, we reiterated our commitment to bring home all the hostages, including those brutally murdered. I hope that diplomacy may achieve a succession of fighting, leading to the return of the hostages and a path toward normalizing relations in the region, along with humanitarian aid and rebuilding. That sentiment echoed back here in Connecticut. Stand united in our resilience and committed to rebuilding a future filled with hope. Now, according to Israeli officials, there are still 101 hostages being held by Hamas, 36 of whom have been declared dead. Their bodies have not yet been released by the militant group. Meantime, the death toll in Gaza is now nearing 42,000 people. Reporting in studio tonight, Kaylee Collins, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Kaylee. And tonight in Florida, people are preparing for Hurricane Milton. The National Hurricane Center is issuing warnings saying Floridians in the storm's path need Need to prepare now. The storm surge and winds will be dangerous. Yeah, Milton quickly strengthened into a Category 5 hurricane today. It's expected to make landfall late Wednesday and threaten millions of people with dangerous storm surge and power outages. Here at home, you know, our weather couldn't be more different. We're in the middle of a dry stretch despite a little bit of rain this morning. But, uh, uh, Sam, I know you were been watching the hurricane develop uh, all evening long. We got that uh, we got that update at 5 o'clock that said 180, and you thought, uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's, uh -oh. That's right, guys. Yeah. Uh, it's still 180. And the 8 o'clock update, oh, hi, everybody. A uh, little uh, camera shot here. And you can see that uh, this system still has the eye. Now, it's kind of closed up a little bit. But this thing is still really intensifying, 180 miles miles per hour moving to the east there are now gusts of 220 miles per hour with this system here's the latest track uh, check it out and I'm going to zoom in and here we are it becomes a category three hurricane it weakens ever so slightly as it moves in look at the time Thursday at 2 a.m. so late Wednesday into early Tuesday and it looks like it wants to smash right into Tampa Bay these are the latest watches and warnings uh, we have all kinds of hurricane warnings. We also now have the peak storm surge uh, warning here uh, for up to 12 plus feet in this area. Look at Tampa Bay down the Fort Myers. This, this is where the worst part of the storm is going to occur. Meanwhile, back home, we are quiet in the 50s and lower 60s. We're cooling down after a very mild day today. 
Look at the wind speed still cranking at 10 to 15. And basically we have a clear to partly cloudy sky, a little front coming down, and a secondary front will continue to give us uh, some cool weather as we head through uh, the rest of the week. Temperatures overnight will drop off into the 40s, and by tomorrow we'll wake up in the low 40s and a nice day for your Tuesday. I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll detail uh, this week, and we'll talk more about Milton and all the impacts. Details in a few minutes, guys. All right, Sam, thank you. We have new details tonight from Avon about a pedestrian crash that happened over the weekend. We learned that a 10th grade student at Avon High School is in the hospital tonight in critical condition after being hit by a vehicle on Friday night. Police say the teen was riding a bicycle when he was hit on Arch Road. The teen was trapped on the roof of the vehicle and carried four miles to Harris Road. Police arrested the driver of that vehicle. His name is Alex Rivera. The North Central Municipal Accident Reconstruction Team is further investigating the accident. Today. The stepfather of a boy killed in a go-kart crash in Meriden earlier this year is facing risk of injury charges. A six-year-old and four-year-old were in a homemade go-kart. Police say it was made by their stepdad, Stephen Stolfi. They were playing at Crowenberger Park on April 9th. The six-year-old was driving the go-kart when it hit and went under a closed gate. Investigators say the boy was wearing a helmet, but he still died. According to the arrest warrant, there were several noticeable deficiencies with that go-kart. It went on to say these types of vehicles are not authorized on city streets. Stolfi's due in court tomorrow. Weathersfield police have identified the woman found dead in an apartment last month. Her name was Lisa Beebe. She was 39 years old and from Hartford. Beebe's body was found in an apartment on the Berlin Turnpike on September 24th. Her death was considered suspicious at the time. Police have not determined the exact cause of the death at this point, but say there is no threat to the public. Lisa Beebe's death is still under investigation. Well, new details about a shooting in Norwich that sent one man to the hospital. Police say the man was not targeted, but was the victim of someone recklessly firing their gun. Now, this happened late last night on McKinley Avenue. Police say someone fired a shot from the road and hit a car at another home. A bullet hit the man. He is expected to be okay. Police say it's an active investigation. They have not announced any arrests. A Bridgeport man's in the hospital tonight in critical condition. He allegedly came after an officer with a knife, and that officer opened fire. Well, tonight we're waiting on officer body cam video to show us what happened. All we know is it happened early Saturday morning on Terry, Pla Terry Place. Police say they were called to an apartment, and that's where they found 45-year-old Huntley Jackson, where he allegedly attacked the officer with a knife. The officer's out of the hospital and recovering. Jackson, while hospitalized, is being held on a million-dollar bond and facing a litany of charges. The Office of Inspector General is required by law to release video of the incident by tomorrow morning. That would be within 72 hours of the shooting. A man faces charges tonight after hitting an East Haven police cruiser. East Haven police responded to the TJ Maxx parking lot on Frontage Road Wednesday after a car failed to stop for a Branford police officer. The responding officer positioned his cruiser in front of the car, and that's when the driver, Robert Andrus, allegedly hit the cruiser as he drove from the scene. He was found a short time later on I-95 and taken into custody by state police. A passenger in the car was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. No officers were hurt. The leader of a catalytic converter trafficking ring pleaded guilty today for thefts all across the state. Alexander Callistus of Woolcott owned and operated Downpipe Depot in East Hartford, and that's where he purchased stolen catalytic converters from a network of thieves. Records show many of Callistus's suppliers were selling thousands to tens of thousands of dollars worth of stolen converters to him each week. A catalytic converter contains precious metals and can easily be removed from a vehicle, making it a target. Well, Callistus faces up to 20 years in prison. He's scheduled to be sentenced in January. Well, new here at 10, a Southington homeowner is feeling uneasy after something that happened at her farm stand, and she caught it on camera. Yeah, and now video shows an Amazon delivery driver taking money from that farm stand. Fox 61's Kate Pattyfoot spoke with the owner who says she won't be leaving anything on her porch again. Mary Bouchard left $10 in her farm stand on Sunday, but after receiving an Amazon package, she checked it again and noticed it was gone. She then went to her security cameras and found out what happened. 
saw the footage of him clearly taking the money out of the jar. There was no other reason for him to touch that jar whatsoever. Most Amazon drivers come up and they throw the package on the front porch, it hits the door, it hits the ground, and they're out of here. Bouchard said she often leaves money on this farm stand so neighbors can make change if needed. So anytime there's eggs out there, I put the change in the jar so that you know, my family and friends can come as they please and pick up the eggs and they don't have to worry about exact change or having the money. It's it's just there if they need it. And I put it out when I know someone's coming. She did not want her face shown on camera for concerns of her safety. On her ring camera, you can see the driver deliver the package, then reach in the jar and take the money. At this point, he's not facing criminal charges, so we've chosen not to show his face at this time. Fox 61 spoke to Mobashar Akron, whose company, Nutmeg Courier, works with Amazon as a subcontractor. He said he filed a police report with Southington Police and didn't give the driver's name to the officer, but is working with them. Akron also said that driver has been let go, but not before he and the former driver showed up to Bouchard's house to give the driver's side of the story. And he requested to stop by earlier today and I said that's fine just let me know before you're coming and he did and he showed up and he ended up bringing the driver that stole the money back with him without my consent. Bouchard said it's scary that he was brought back to her home and now knows what she looks like. But I can't do anything if I don't have his name. I can't file a real police report. I can't press charges. I can't even file a restraining order. Mary Bouchard said ultimately it's not about the money. It's about the principal and her family's safety. Having the former driver's name will allow her to formally press charges. In Southington, Cape Hattyfoot, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.